<laughs> and welcome to the Dope World News Podcast. Take it over your listening space where you're listening to us at www.overdopeproductions.com. Yeah. The Apple Podcast app. Yeah. Spotify. Yeah. And where it benefits us the most. Where's that? That's the Anchor app. Yes, sir. It don't matter who you thought I was, I go by Prestige. And you already know it's the nastiest nigga in the world, aka Zen, the zeitgeist of everything nasty. Who the fuck we got in here with us? Yo, we got the best. It's episode 28, and I'm still not getting it right. <laughs> I mean, the greatest engineer yes. slash producer in the world, yes. Nevada Nash. Yo, yo, we all just entertainers. And we also got the motherfucking god of visuals. My motherfucking nigga, yeah, got drills. What's good, bro? What's happening? Yes, sir. Hey, it's a still it's like, whatever the card is, that's where you need to be hey, apart from. Hey, hey, <laughs> words for the wise. That's how niggas should be driving as well. Mm. You know what I'm Literally. Mm. It said in the hand. Because I swear to God, one more of y'all niggas pull up on my bumper like that, we square off. Because the streets is empty, nigga. Because why ain't you drunk. driving that fast? We get drunk, bitch. <laughs> you shouldn't be late. Like, there's no way you should be late right now, bro, to anywhere you going. Exactly. If you late, you fucked up. Sure. So, who is our unspoken hip hop legend this week? So, this week, we got Master P. P. Yeah. As the unspoken hip hop legend, hip hop's evolution's home. Because Master P, as much as he does get his credit in the game, <clears throat> we need to give him more credit yeah. from the game. No, yep. Because he gave us all the game yeah. at the end of the day. And what people consider independent, mm -hmm. if it wasn't for a guy like Master P and how he was, there wouldn't be that lane mm -hmm. the way that we see. So. Yep. Master P, a.k.a. Well, really known Percy as Miller. Percy Robert <laughs> Miller um, was an actor, mm. rapper, mm. record producer, yeah. philanthropist, yeah. and a former basketball player. Oh, he he go, go, he 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 go, no limits. And the clip. Oh, and the Hornets. Yeah. Yep. Which yep. was relaunched as New No Limit Records through Universal Records yep. and Contra That's Records. right. Then again, as Gutter Music Entertainment, mm. and currently No Limit Forever Records. Yes. In 2009, Forbes estimated Miller's net worth was nearly seven hundred million dollars. <laughs> yeah, Rap snacks, <laughs> which put him as the third richest figure in hip hop at the time. Yep. Miller gained further popularity um, in his younger days in his career, around the years like 1997 and such, when. He went platinum with his single, Make Him Say, Um. Uh. Of course, everybody know that one. Everybody know. Man, uh, that shit was hot. In, in the total, Miller, he reached a, he, he released about 15 studio albums. Aside from the music, he embarked on a career with acting, starring in films such as I Got the Hook Up. Yeah. Soccer Mom. Yeah. Going in 60 Seconds. Yeah. Toxic. Yeah. And Foolish. She, and Foolish was the dopest one. Um, Miller also worked in television, starring in the sitcom Romeo, okay. featuring his son. And that was on Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. On, on Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. On where Nickelodeon. he uh, actually played uh, his he actually his played son his son's dad. father. Yeah. He signed uh, to two separate NBA contracts in the late 1990s, mm. playing with both the Charlotte Hornets and Toronto Raptors yeah. during the 1998 and the 1999 preseason, respectively. Mm. He attended Booker T. Washington High School and Warren Easton High School, where he played basketball. Uh, Miller attended the University of Houston on an athletic scholarship, wow. but he dropped out months into his freshman year and transferred to Merritt College in Oakland, California, to major in business administration. So, obviously, he's always had a path for his own self no matter what he had right in front of him or what his talents told him he should be doing, whether it be basketball or what else. And he also gave room for his brothers and his sons Same and the people in his family to grow as well, not just himself. You know, he's really, to me, he's the uh, Keenan Ivory Wayans of the hip-hop gang. I, I that's, that's, that's a fair comparison. Definitely. He may not be the funniest, you know, like Keenan was, and he may not be the greatest rapper, but he knew what to do to get everybody in a position. Exactly. And one of the things that he also did was get Snoop back. 
he oh yeah when Snoop came over to when those contract the, after uh after Death Row and Snoop came over and he's and Snoop says all the time that Master P showed me how to be my own boss. Mm -hmm. So Snoop with that, on the movies and Snoop, and all of that. Of course, of course, bossing up, great oh, movie. Man, bossing up is dope. But of course, Snoop is one of our heroes. Master P is Dr. Dre. He's Jay Z. He's yeah, all of those definitely. people that we see as billion dollar artists that have made their way and made sure that everybody needs to recognize them. Rap Snacks is in Walmart. Yep, that was a big deal when I seen that. Cause Walmart is in not only is at the corner store now, but Walmart is in every suburban yes, yes, neighborhood you can yes, think of, which yes, means it's nationwide. Yes, yes. And 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 as it's always been ever since the eighties, and that ain't even that long ago when you look mm -hmm, at it. Right. Yeah, for sure. White kids specifically, if they can love it, then the rest of the world. When the white kids them. see the Migos on the fucking rap snacks, they gonna go crazy. They love it. Dab Migos. a ranch. It's Come just on. a dab a ranch. If it wasn't for people like the Migos, the crossover wouldn't have happened as fluidly as it for did. Sure. Right. Being for sure. For sure. Because like 2015, 16, that hip hop truly crossed. It started over. to trans. Well, it, it was. Did. It was really like, and people don't want to give them niggas the credit. It was like. 13 for real, 14. Cause when Fetty Wap started coming into the Drake. game, oh, Drake, like well, yeah. that. Drake, 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 Drake,
Spotify. But G, G, can, where else? Can I, can I, to make this go back to what we were talking about about Master P is Master P songs was never number one songs except for you know two or three of them, but everybody in the world knew exactly who Master P, who uh, a mystical, who. Those guys were in No Limit every single time. And that's me that means something. It doesn't matter if you're the number one song in the world. It matters if the world knows who you are. I could give you that. And can I ask this question? Do the uh spirit of being an independent artist, yes. like Master P was, is TikTok, SoundCloud, Instagram is that a reflection of that same spirit? How these uh, are no. being used? No, no, no. You don't think so? No. What I think those are is that it's a way that people learned how to benefit off of other people's content. Mm. And that's really what it is. And it's not a I bad thing that. at all, but it makes it easier for people to make content, basically, because it's a constant thread of things that people keep on duplicating over and over and over again. So all you need is one song. Yep. All you need is one thing or one phrase or that, one dance or one thing that goes with it. And then it everybody just keeps reciprocating and duplicating song, and shit like that. So that, if you can just get that thing into the cloud, that's all you really got to do. It makes it easier, I think. Song, I don't think that it makes it like... As necessarily like nah, um, make you money. Um, independent artists have something to look forward to, but it's another way that you can dive into the revenue stream and understand like you get one of these songs going on TikTok, psh, that, that might cool. be some money.